So this is a cinematic camera rig, and it costs under a thousand dollars. Let's get into it. All right, so let's first start off by talking about the fun stuff, everything included in the setup. And by the way, I'll have links down in the description below, including everything in this setup. So starting off with possibly the most important part of the cinematic rig, the camera. And the camera I'm using on here is the Canon SL2. And when the Canon SL2 came out, it costs around $549 for the body alone. However, nowadays you should be able to find it even cheaper on places like eBay and Facebook Marketplace. And there's a few reasons this camera is perfect for a budget-friendly beginner cinema rig like this one. First of all, the price of this thing isn't too expensive if it's only gonna cost you around 550 bucks or even cheaper then that's pretty cheap for a camera especially a camera that came out within the last 10 years on top of that this thing has 1920 by 1080 full hd and it can also shoot in 24 30 and 60 frames per second and beyond that it also has canon's famous dual pixel autofocus which is possibly one of the best autofocusing systems for dslrs and along with all of that it also has a variable articulating touchscreen but it is missing a few features that would make it possibly the best budget friendly cinema camera and some of those things are that it only has one card slot there's no in-body image stabilization and a few other small things that aren't really a big deal but would make this camera just that much better all right so along with the camera we're also using a cool little shotgun microphone called the Boya BY-MM1. And this thing runs around $29.95 on Amazon. It's a great little shotgun microphone, especially for a camera rig like this, because it keeps it nice and portable. Some of the great things about this microphone, it doesn't take batteries. All the battery power that this microphone runs off of comes from the camera or sound recorder that it's plugged into. The sound quality is decent. It's not incredible, but it's pretty good for a microphone that only costs 30 bucks. And it's nice and small, which like I said, keeps this camera rig pretty portable. Oh, and on top of that, it also comes with a bunch of accessories. It has a carrying case. It came with this dead cat. Um, it has two cables that it comes with. One's meant for cameras and sound recorders. The other cable is meant for plugging it into something like your phone. However, there are a few downsides to this microphone as well. And some of those downsides include things like the hot shoe mounts that come with this thing. It's pretty obvious that they're kind of cheap and I broke the two that came with the microphone within the first week that I had them. Other than that, you also gotta watch out for the dead cat on this thing. It's not the best and even when I'm recording out in windy situations, it still picks up some of that wind noise. Furthermore, like I said, the sound quality of this thing isn't incredible. You might notice that this microphone picks up a little bit of noise, especially if you have it plugged into a camera. However, if you plug it into a more professional sound recorder, it takes some of that noise away. All right, so we've talked about the camera, we've talked about the microphone, but what lens do we got running on this thing? Well, I think this one is pretty obvious. We got the Canon 50 millimeter F 1.8 on there, the nifty 50. And this thing comes in at around $125 on Amazon. Actually, another great lens option for a camera rig like this would have been the Canon 24 millimeter F 2.8. But I'm pretty sure that one's a little bit more expensive than the 50 millimeter and it would have put us over a thousand dollars but anyways there's not much to say about the canon 50 millimeter at this point i'm pretty sure everybody's heard about it but if you haven't heard about it a few great things about this lens are the aperture of f1.8 the size of this thing is incredibly small and the image quality for a lens this cheap is pretty good i'd say the only negative about it is that it's not a 50 millimeter on an aps-c sensor it's actually closer to 80 millimeters. So that's kind of tight if you wanna have some variety within your footage. All right, since we're talking about the lens, we might as well hit on the ND filter and the step up ring as well. So the ND filter we have on this lens is different from the one I recommend getting. The one I recommend getting is the KNF Concept 82 millimeter filter 
from ND8 to ND128. However, the ND filter I have on right now is a Tiffin ND filter, but it's only 72 millimeters and it also costs a few bucks more than the KNF Concept one. However, even though the KNF Concept one I'm recommending is cheaper, I think it's a better option. And here's a few reasons I like the KNF Concept over the Tiffin. First of all, the build quality of the KNF Concept I think is a little bit better. Secondly, the KNF Concept has hard stops, so when you're twisting the filter, you'll reach a point to where you can't twist it any further. Thirdly, I like the color tint on the KNF Concept rather than the Tiffin because the KNF Concept, in my opinion, has a bluer tone to it rather than the Tiffin's yellowish tone. And finally, the price is just better. We're getting a little bit of sun on us, so I'm gonna move us over this way just a little bit. There, that's better. All right, now what about the step-up ring that's connecting the ND filter to the lens? Well, on my camera rig, I have a step-up ring made by a brand called Sensei, but I couldn't find a 49 to 82 millimeter step-up ring made by Sensei. So instead of that one, I think you should be fine getting the ICE 49 to 82 millimeter step-up ring. And this one's gonna run you about 595 on Amazon. And from the reviews that I've seen about it on Amazon, it seems like it's good enough. I mean, it's just a step-up ring and it's only five bucks. So you should be fine getting this one. All right, so we've got the camera, the microphone, the lens, the ND filter, the step-up ring. Last thing in the cinema setup is the cage. Now I found this camera cage on Amazon and it's called the Camvate Camera Cage for DSLRs. And it costs around $81.22. But if you wanna save a few bucks, then you don't have to get the top handle with it. And I think that knocks maybe $20 off. But anyways, I haven't had this thing for very long, so I haven't been able to form a complete opinion about it but so far it's pretty good. I've been able to use it on this camera, which is kind of a smaller camera, but I've also used it on my bigger full frame camera that I'm shooting on right now, the Canon 60 Mark II. The top handle makes it super easy to shoot at low angles. I like the handle on the side as well. It's perfect for handheld footage and the look of it is just really cool too. And you also have a bunch of different mounting options and setups when it comes to this thing. For example, you don't have to have this top handle facing this way. You could flip it 180 degrees to where it's facing forward. And now for the bad things about this cage, I can really only think of one and that's the setup time. The total amount of time it takes me to set this whole thing up is probably close to half an hour. And that's mainly because there's a lot of hidden Allen bolts and screws within this thing that you have to make sure are tightened down and secure so nothing falls off. Other than that though, it's a pretty solid cage. On to the next location. All right, so we've talked about every little piece of gear on this cinema rig. But if you do have a budget of $1,000, then I recommend getting this one other piece of gear. Okay guys, so this is the final piece of gear I'm talking about. Now the tripod I'm using right here is called the Sunpack Travel 8 Pro. It says it right there on the side. And I actually don't really recommend getting this one, guys. And that's because this tripod is meant for photographers. So the head on it isn't really made for video. It also runs off of this twist lock system and I don't really care for it. And honestly, guys, I don't even trust it holding up this small camera rig. So if you guys can find a different tripod out there made by a company that you trust, then I recommend getting that one over the Sunpack Travel Light Pro. All right, anyways, if you total up everything included in this camera rig setup, along with the tripod, it comes out to $999.06. Well, that's great and all. We found a budget-friendly camera rig, but how does it look and sound? Well, let me show you. In a sea of the dying and shameless, uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't wanna be one of the nameless. I'ma wake up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it. And I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations. Don't try to stop me, I exist to remember your story.
All right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this one. And if you want to see more videos about photo and video, subscribe by clicking right there. Thanks for watching, and always remember to capture great moments. Peace.